Hello, this is Daniel from Sandance Couch. In this video, I will be looking at the mini DSP Umake One measuring microphone and how it compares to a regular puck microphone that's usually included in the purchase of an AV surround receiver. I will be using an Onkyo RZ50 and its direct live room correction for this review. Is the Umake One microphone delivering better sounding results? Let's find out! A lot of AV receivers come with a puck-shaped microphone, so that you can instantly use the onboard room correction software. Some room correction software is more advanced than others, like for example Direct Life. And as a sound enthusiast, you start to wonder if a better quality measuring microphone would enhance the results of the room correction. I have done my initial room correction with a standard puck microphone that came bundled with my Onkyo RZ50 receiver and the results were very good, as I've talked about it in my Onkyo Direct Live video. After upgrading to high quality speakers from the brand Monitor Audio, I redid my measurements, but in the back of my head I always wondered if my little puck mic was able to encompass all of the frequencies my new speakers are able to produce. So I took the plunge and bought myself the mini DSP Umic One microphone. It is highly praised online and is even the recommended microphone by Direct Life itself. The Umic microphone is an omnidirectional USB measurement microphone and, other than the puck microphone, has to be connected directly to your computer and not the AV receiver itself. This is the box the microphone comes in, which promotes that it works great with Direct Life and Room EQ Wizard room correction. The mic comes with a foam windscreen that unless you are trying to calibrate an outdoor audio system is not needed and shouldn't be installed for indoor calibrations. The microphone itself is safely packed and feels nice and heavy. The mic has, in its latest version, a USB-C connector which makes life much easier with modern computers. Also in the box is a mini tripod, which can come in handy when placing it on different areas around your room. A 2 meter long USB-C cable and a mic clip is also in the box. With the puck microphone, it was relatively easy to just put on different positions on the primary listening location with the help of some pillows. The UMIG One, with its supplied tripod, can be used to position the microphone in different measuring spots in your room. But this combination turns out to be a little clunky sometimes, and it can become a little bit difficult to position, especially on soft surfaces like the top of a couch. The tripod tends to easily tilt which is not ideal, since you want the microphone to be at a perfect 90 degree angle pointing towards your ceiling, for perfect surround sound measuring results. So I decided to go all pro and bought myself a microphone stand from Amazon. The mic comes with a mounting clip that screws into the stand easily. I also opted for a longer and angled USB-C cable to be able to move the mic around easier while being connected to my computer. The angle plug makes it easier to place the microphone and the longer length makes moving around less of a pain. Out of curiosity, I tried connecting the microphone to my iPad Pro, which does work with some audio applications, but the Direct Live app didn't recognize the Umic One at all. Which is not a tragedy, since the Direct Live app for smartphones seems like a comfortable way of doing things, but I will always recommend the computer software. It has way more functionality and you can save different setups and edit them later again if you want it. And of course, with the computer software, you are able to use the Umic One, which again Direct Live even recommends themselves. So just like at my original run of measurements with the puck mic, 
I'm using the computer version of the Direct Live software in its latest installment. For the microphone to work correctly, you will have to download a calibration file, which you can get directly from the Mini DSP website by inputting your serial number. You choose between a stereo profile and a 90 degree profile for surround sound setups, like I have, so I will be using this profile. Once the profile is loaded into the Direct Live software, it is time to adjust the microphone gain, the main volume and the volume for each speaker. The goal here is to have a 20 dB to 30 dB gap between the background noise of your home to the actual measuring tone signal. I followed the guide from the website milau.net, which was very helpful. Right at the start I already noticed that the UMIC one is way more sensitive and I'm having an easier time adjusting the volume of the speakers and the gain of the microphone. I also did not get the annoying clipping problems I used to get from the speakers and especially the subwoofer. Make sure all speakers and your subwoofer are outputting sound at the same volume level and then the measuring can start. I am using the white imaging arrangement, where I will have to measure 17 spots in and around my primary listening position. The UMIG-1 in combination with my microphone stand made my life much easier when choosing each position in my room, where I did not have to deal with any uneven surfaces. After all, I had to do 17 measuring positions for my room. My extra long USB-C cable also made things more comfortable, where I did not have to move my laptop around the room together with the microphone. So how did my measuring, and first and foremost, my sound changed compared to having used the Puck microphone before? What I noticed first was that Direct Live, now having more frequencies information coming from the UMIC-1, configured my crossover settings partially different. So is my center speaker now crossed over at 90Hz, compared to 120Hz it was set to before using the Puck microphone? which in my opinion does sound better, since my center is indeed capable of playing deeper and is by its manufacturer recommended for a 80Hz crossover. So if you don't want to mess around with these settings manually, the UMIC-1 gets the crossover settings better adjusted to where it should be at, also taking your room acoustics into the equation. Here's a screenshot comparing my measurement with the UMIC-1 against the measurement with the Puck microphone. The volume levels for each speaker, no matter what microphone you use, should always be double checked by using an SPL meter, and I did manually adjust those levels with my SPL meter as well. I did notice though that the speaker levels set by Direct Live with the UMIC-1 microphone are much closer to the optimal settings than they were set to with the Puck microphone. Also, I found that the subwoofer level was actually right on spot this time which was completely wrong before and was set way too low volume when set up with the Puck microphone. After checking and minimally adjusting the settings inside my OnQ receiver, I ended up with a clean and even sounding direct live filter setting. It sounded so good to me that I didn't even need to make adjustments inside the direct live software itself, and I left it to how the software measured it with the help of the UMIC-1 microphone. The bass that comes out of my subwoofer is more clean has the right kind of power where it needs to be at, especially for movies, and my main speakers sound very dynamic, crossing over nicely with my subwoofer while delivering pleasant heights and good mids. Also the center speaker got a little more clearer as well with the newly measured settings. On a whole, I'm very pleased with the results and I'm happy I took the step to get the UMIC-1 measuring microphone. Conclusion 
Was it worth upgrading to the Umic 1? For me personally, I think it was definitely worth it. The supplied puck microphone that comes with an AV receiver is not bad. It does get the job done. But there is room for improvement and the more information the room correction software gets from the microphone, the better the filters can be adjusted for your room. If you think about all the money you already invested in getting a nice AV receiver and great sounding speakers and a subwoofer, I can recommend taking the extra step investing another $100 into a good microphone like the Umic One to get the best results possible in your room. It is not a night and day difference, but it puts finishing touches on the settings that makes the most out of your expensive equipment. So if you have a direct life capable AV receiver, I would get the Umic One microphone as well. What about you? Are you using the supplied puck microphone for your room correction? Or are you using a special calibrated room correction microphone? Let me know in the comments of this video. I hope this video was insightful and helps you towards perfecting your room correction in your home. Please consider liking and subscribing to this channel if you would like to see more of my videos, cool tech reviews and games. It really helps me to make more content for you in the future. Until then, I will see you next time on Sam Dan's Couch.